Hey everybody, welcome back to Living in Charlotte. On this channel, we go over neighborhood tours, housing market updates, and all things Charlotte related. In today's episode, we're gonna be going over Ballantyne, North Carolina. That's actually in South Charlotte near the South Carolina border. We're gonna be going over housing market trends to see how much it would cost for you to live in Ballantyne and a little thing that they're calling Ballantyne Reimagined, which is a big facelift for the area. But without further ado, let's get into the video. If you've seen my videos before, you know I like to start off with housing information for the area that we're looking at. But I want to draw your attention just below my photo here and you can see all of our contact information. So if you have any questions about Ballantyne or the Charlotte area, don't be afraid to call, text or email. We would love to help you with any questions you have about moving or relocating to the Charlotte area. First, I want to draw your attention to the median sale price, which is $525,000, a 3.6% year over year increase. And that's pretty standard. Typically, housing prices do go up 2 to 4% or 2 to 5% every year. And you can see that also represented in this graph here, slowly going up over time with a few spikes. The highest it was at one point was July of 23, and that was $575,000. And it has come down and stabilized a little bit since then. The next stat is number of homes sold, 183, which is slightly down year over year. But you can see in this graph that it typically spikes up around spring and summer and then drops down in fall and winter. That's something that we call the heartbeat of real estate. Now it does have a little bit of a lower trajectory here. I think it's just because prices in that area have gone up considerably. So the number of people who will be able to afford those houses might have dropped slightly. The next one is median days on market, which is 32, and that is down slightly year over year. Uh, you can see this graph here. It was dropping for quite a while. It did go back up in 22. 23 in February was actually 57 days on the market, but ever since that point, it's kind of been shot down a little bit and then going on a little bit of an upward trajectory, but nothing that's going to be super crazy. I do expect that to go up a little bit more, but this is pretty normal. And I wanted to mention that all this information is on redfin.com. So if you're interested in looking up a particular area that's not Ballantyne or somewhere else around Charlotte, you can go to redfin.com, type in the zip code, and you can find all this information as well. And now going into the next stat here, we're gonna look at sale to list price. And you can see this right around 100%. So whatever people are putting their house at, typically they're getting what they're asking for. And this graph here, the highest at one point it was, was in June of 22, right around 105%. So the summer of 22 was pretty high, came back down. The summer of 23 was not quite as high, a little bit high, 101%, and then we came back down a little bit. So that means if you're looking for a house in Ballantyne, it will be a pretty competitive market as to whatever you put your house at, pretty much you're gonna get it or slightly above. This next stat here kind of goes along with it. Home sold above list price, 43.9%. That's up 22 points over year over year. And you can see that the summer of 22 was really, really popping off there. It did dip down. And the summer of 23, of course, didn't get quite as high, but still a very competitive market over the last couple years. Schools we don't go over too much. My wife, Kristen, did make a video on that, and I will put it up on the screen here for you to look at if you're interested. But here are some of the schools that are in the area. They're very highly rated. We also have good charter schools and private schools as well. If you have any interest in that, reach out to us and we can help you on your search. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the weather. Here in Charlotte, in the South, you know it can get pretty warm. But really the only time that you're kind of stuck in your house is possibly July and August, where temperatures can get pretty high in the 90s and low 100s, and then the heat index is of course higher than that. But the good news is a lot of communities actually have pools, and that's only two months out of the year where you're actually stuck in the house where you don't really go out, want to go outside because the weather is so oppressive. The rest of the year will be pretty warm, December, January, and February, you will get those cold mornings, you know, maybe in the mid 20s. Uh, usually we go down to maybe like around 30 or 35, you'll get frost on your car. And if it is cold enough, it will snow here. However, in the last two years, we have not had any snow, which is a little bit is not typical of Charlotte. Typically, we do get some snowfall throughout the year. We've been down here for almost six years now, and the last two years were the only years where we haven't seen any snow. And a lot of times you won't even see the snow until February or March. We get some snow around that time, funny enough. And then right after that little snow, we get a beautiful spring where temperatures are in the 60s and 70s, and you can be outside all the time. 
And I'm gonna to touch on transportation a little bit. If you're coming from another big city, transportation isn't the best here in Charlotte, but we do have buses that run through the city if you go up that way, but nothing like your big cities like Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. They are trying to work to improve that, but unfortunately right now we're just not up to par with that. So it is very car dependent. I wanted to show you this map real quick. You can see that Charlotte is up there on the north side and down here is the Ballantine area. So you can just see what kind of commute you'd have. Now typically it would be like a 30 or 40 minute commute depending on traffic, but this is about where you would be looking at if you were looking to live in Ballantine and having to work in Charlotte or the surrounding areas. All right, let's go over some recently sold houses to see what you might be paying in the area and to see if anything would look interesting to you if you're looking to move here. So first, let's look at this beautiful brick here. This one sold on January 26th, was listed for $749.9, went for $730,000, which was slightly below list price, and it was on the market for 56 days. So someone got a pretty good deal with that. Let's scroll over a little bit. Here's another brick house here. This one was listed for $440,000 and actually went a little bit above at $445,900. Was on the market for 37 days and just over list price. And I want to draw your eyes down to the days on market. Typically what we're seeing in the area now is at least 30 days plus to sell a house. So if you're looking to sell a house, be thinking that it's going to take you at least 30 days to get something under contract just because that's how the market is right now. We're not quite into spring yet, but once we do, it, things might go a little bit quicker. One more quick thing I wanted to bring up before we go into Ballantine Reimagined, their beautiful way of redesigning the city, is that Elevation Church is actually housed right in Ballantine. That's their main campus. That's where Stephen Furtick preaches every time he does. So if you're interested in a certain church and you like Elevation, I just wanted to point that out because that is a little fun fact that that is located right in downtown Ballantine. And now I save the best for last. This is Ballantine Reimagined. This is the facelift, the improvement that they're actually doing in Ballantine. And I wanted to give you a brief overview of what that is. The first thing I wanted to show you is the stream park. Now this has just been completed recently and it's open every day to the public from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. And as you can see, it's got some slides and lots of places to walk around with you and your family so you can go outside and have fun in the great outdoors. And while you and your family are out at Stream Park, you guys can actually go to the Greenway. And you can see right here that it is a huge walking trail that you and your family can enjoy walking around the whole Ballantine reimagined area. And one of my favorite things is the amp at Ballantine. This is an outside music venue where you can just pull up with a picnic basket and a blanket and you can sit there and listen to music. I know they just completed their fall schedule and they're working on their spring and summer one. If you're interested in the upcoming schedule for the AMP in Valentine, you can go to goballantine.com and you can find the schedule there to see what's upcoming and what you can go to. There was so much to do in Valentine and they're not even complete yet. As you can see with this list here, you can see that they got the first three completed. 2024 has one project that is supposed to be done. And in 2025, the residential should be completed. Now, if you want to live right in the heart of downtown Ballantine, this is going to be where some high rise buildings are going to be located and you can live right in Ballantine. And as we wrap up this video about Ballantine, I'm going to link this down in the description for you. It is a year in review for Ballantine 2023, where it shows what they've completed and some stuff that they're working on for 2024 and beyond. But that's all I got for you in today's video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel for all things Charlotte. And if you are thinking about moving to Ballantine, please reach out to us, call, text, or email. We would love to help you start your search today for Ballantine, North Carolina. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.